Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the orders section. Uh, so the order section is where we have all of our processed orders. So once a customer does proceed to check out uh, some of the products in our store, we're going to receive an order. Uh, so the following here are just some of the orders that I have on my store. We'll be taking a look at the most recent. Uh, so let's go ahead and take out order number five. Uh, also here in the top, we have a couple of statistics such as conversion rate percentage, abandoned carts for the day of today, average order value, uh, and we have the ability to refresh the stats here. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this order. We'll just go ahead and click on view. Okay, so for the following order, uh, this is the date that this order occurred on. This was the total. Uh, we have no messages regarding this order and there's three products that were purchased um, or processed for this order so we have the order reference number or the reference id uh, the order id uh, so definitely here we have the ability to print this order um, we have the status of the order and some of the shipping information and uh, now one thing here on the status section uh, so for example right on this order, we are awaiting a bank wire payment. So when a customer purchases um, an item, it's going to be uh, one of the following, either awaiting payment um, or depending on the situation. For example, if you do purchase via PayPal, PayPal will let the store know that it has processed the payment and it would then say payment accepted. So, for example, for this one, they have been uh, we have been awaiting bank wire payment. However, we look today and we finally received it. So we'll go ahead and click on payment accepted. Once we click on uh, payment accepted, we'll go ahead and select update status. OK, sorry about that. That message was because I did click on it twice, uh, so it seemed to try to process that twice when it was only once. Um, sorry about that, but definitely as we could see here, we refresh the page, we just have payment has been accepted. It's green now. And what this does is it actually sends an email to the customer letting them know that the payment has been processed. Now this will only send an email if you do have your email set up. Uh, keep in mind that if you have not set up any email server configurations, none of this information is going to be sent via email. Uh, definitely once you have um, accepted a payment, you're going to see that this view invoice has now uh, been available. So if you go ahead and click on it, you're going to see a PDF version of your invoice. So we have the delivery address, the billing address, uh, the reference number, and some of the following information. Uh, if we go down here, we have payment. Uh, we could see that they've paid and a bank wire, uh, seventy-one fifty-one. If by any chance they added something additional, or by any chance uh, there's any type of other payments, you could specify that here as well. Uh, the currency. We also have the customer information, uh, where we have the shipping address, the invoice address. Uh, we have the ability to change that. Uh, maybe add a private note on this order uh, or view the customer full details. Uh, we also have the messages. So just in case we do have like, let's say a delay, we do want to specify delay. It has a predefined message, which will show in just a moment how you could add predefined messages. Uh, they're pretty much here. You just select whatever one you want or select your own or write your own and then send message regarding this order. Uh, we also have a listing of all the products that were purchased. We have the ability to add a new product to this order or maybe add a new discount. Let's go ahead and take a look at the invoice. Now the invoice gives us a couple of options regarding these. Uh, for example, uh, we have by order status. Uh, so definitely we have some of the, we could generate some of the PDF files by status uh, of which ones are in that current state. 
We also have some invoice options such as enable invoice. So if you do have it enabled, your customers will receive an invoice for their purchase. Uh, definitely you have a enable tax breakdown, which has you a detailed uh, breakdown of your taxes. Uh, do you want a product image to be added to your invoice? And a couple of other options that we have here regarding all the invoices for your store. Uh, definitely once again, um, I do have mentioned this a couple times, but you could always click help. Uh, and this will definitely give you uh, a deep explanation of each field. Uh, so if you have any questions, you could always refer to here on the help. Now let's head over to the merchandise returns. Now, anytime you do sell any products, a lot of times you might have to deal with merchandise returns. Uh, maybe something that they received isn't the, uh, the exact size they uh, they wanted, or maybe they want to exchange uh, a product for any reason, uh, they have the ability to do so. And here you specify exactly how. So here, uh, the very first thing you have the ability to specify where you, whether you want to allow returns or not to allow returns. And if you do want to allow returns, uh, you have the ability to specify what is the time, uh, the time limit or how many days after the delivery date does the customer have to return a product. Uh, by default, it is 14. And we also have return prefix. So whenever you, you see an order, you could also give it a prefix to know it's a return. Uh, definitely, I don't have any returns at this moment. So it's not going to be showing up here. Here we have delivery slips. So uh, just in case you want to generate some um, delivery slips, maybe from a certain date uh, range, you could do so in this section. We have the ability to add some prefix, uh, delivery number, and do you want to enable product image on a delivery slip? We have the ability to also add credit slips. Uh, so just in case a customer did get some credit, you could also issue a credit slip. Uh, you could generate these uh, via PDF. Uh, we have the status section. So remember in the order sec in the orders uh, page, whenever we did change the status, let's say we were waiting for payment. Uh, this was the status that we selected. Uh, you could always add new one, edit any of the following, or remove any of the following. Uh, we also have return statuses, so whenever they return a package. And we have the order message. Uh, so for example, this one comes by default. Whenever something is not in stock anymore, uh, you do want to let the customer know just in case you do have back ordering available. And you could have a predefined message. For example, this one reads, Hi, unfortunately, an item on your order is currently out of stock. This may cause a slight delay in delivery. Please accept our apologies and rest assured that we are working hard to rectify this. So definitely you could add your own uh, personalized message. Uh, so whenever you do need to send maybe an uh, order message, you could have that ready to go. Um, and this is how you handle all of these orders. Uh, so definitely the next and last thing we'll be talking about um, will be the price rules. So definitely you could give customers different discounts and different things like that, which is definitely going to be a great help.